Hi, I'm Craig Tomler from Startup Hit Stories. I'm here with uh, jo Joanna Mendoza from Before You Build. Yes. So, uh, Joanna, can you tell us a little bit about um, your startup? Okay. Um, so, I'm Joanna Mendoza, as um, Craig said. Um, my, my business is called Before You Build. Um, it is about helping home buyers to make the smarter decisions before they sign the contract. 90% um, of, surprisingly, about 90% of customers, when they're looking at the contracts or before they sign the builder, they don't do enough research, or they don't understand the contract or inclusion list before they actually sign the contract. And once they sign the contract, it actually ended up costing them a lot more okay. on, on their build. Yeah. If they had known someone to go through them in a structured way, it would have cost them a lot less. Um, building a house is very stressful, and my, my job is to make it as less stressful as possible. Also, I do um, build, it, build a background check, so, mm -hmm. to, um, so they understand that the builder is not getting sued left, right, and center. They're not, mm -hmm. um, they're not in the brink of liquidation because of the um, amount of debt that they've got. Um, the company directors didn't have, say, a liquidated companies in the past and open up a new company the next day. So those are information that I pass on to the customers so they, they become more aware of who they're dealing with, um, the, the, their contracts, and making sure that all the paperwork that they've got are all are in properly in place. Yeah, well, that, I think that's a really important function. Like yeah. I've, I've been a property investor for uh, 20 years or yeah. thereabouts. And... I've seen people get burnt when they buy off the plan or yeah. when they, you know, they're, when they're doing a knockdown rebuild. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, they, the stress almost always comes from, you know, the, the contract that they've got in place with the builder and, and they've only got limited room to move once yeah. that's in place. And um, it, it is quite scary because uh, people sign on a massive amount of contract. We're talking about half, a, sometimes it's half a million dollars worth of of contract and no one helped them like hold their hands yeah. through the process and um, it's a big investment some yeah. some people like I save you know it took me eight years to save my deposit for my house mm. and if I lost it all it would be very devastating, um, devastating yeah. yeah it would be yeah um, so what made you decide to get into this startup I know it's fairly new you've yeah, only started it it sort yeah. of in the last year mm. I started it because I lost a lot of money on my build Right. I, it was stressful. Um, I looked at someone to help me in the beginning of my build and it cost about $6,000. And because of that cost factor, I couldn't, uh, um, I couldn't pay for it because you know, I had to pay the deposit, the lawyers, etc. Um, and when I lost a lot of money, I looked through the system. The system of the building process is flawed. And I told myself, I cannot let this happen to other home buyers. Mm -hmm. I did 12 months of research on where the system has gone wrong, what are the major risks of building, what I can do to prevent it, to, to, for the risk to not happen. And mm -hmm. if the risk occurred, because you know there's always risk on everything, I want, I want my, my clients to lose as less money as possible. Yes. Um, after that experience, uh, as I said, I don't want anyone to go through that. It's the worst feeling in the world. And I, as I said, I put a lot of research, investigation, interviews of builders, of um, people that I've built in the past. And I want to pass it on to the, to the home buyers. And I'm doing this to, to drive the change to the industry. Mm -hmm. I believe that um, increasing the awareness of the home buyers will make the builders more ethical, more yes. honest. It'll be more transparent because they will find that people are just more knowledgeable. Yes. And they cannot be, it, they cannot be duped or, or anything like that. So that's what that's my total aim. And my ultimate vision is no one will use my service anymore because the whole the market <laughs> is working tra in transparent. Um, you know, honestly and ethically, um, it's m my driving force is if I can help ten people in one year, it will make, it will make it a lot worth it. Yeah. Um, you know, as bad as it sounds, like maybe I lost money to have this business so I can help other people. Because if I didn't, then um, maybe I would have not had this idea after all. Mm. Yeah. Well, quite often people go into business and lose money, but you lost the money that prompted you to go into business, yes. which is, uh, yeah. I, th I think, is a, is a good yeah. thing yeah. Um, to help other people not get into that sort of situation. Yeah, I will never get my money back, I know that. But what I can get it back is 
um, the joy of that help other people to, yeah. to build a dream home. Um, when I meet clients, the um, the immediate gratitude that I receive from them, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel that all that heartache that I had in the past is worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's still your commercial business, yes. but you've really got some very strong social goals in there. So yes. would you see it more of a social enterprise? Or? It is more yeah. social enterprise. I, um, my fee is below the cost. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost the, the, um, the home buyer $6,000 because I don't want them that the cost that will stop them using my service. Yes. It is less than $1,000. Yeah. And I know, for example, one of my clients is um, the contract change is $1,000. Yes. Every single time he changed his contract, it would have cost him a thousand dollars, and you could basically recoup that fee that you got from me within one contract change. Yeah. And it is, uh, you know, social sh social um, enterprise more than the yeah. profit making. Yeah, but it's still a profit making business as well because there's is. still a lot. You know, the, 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 it, it's still a valuable service for people, and they and they're willing to pay for that. I'd say. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm really hoping that people see the value of it. People see mm -hmm. the importance of it, and um, and I can help as many people as I can, yeah. and drive change in the building industry. Yeah. So, so what challenges have you encountered so far in setting this up? This mm -hmm. is your first startup as yes. well. So yes. it's the first time you've gone through this process. Um. The very f I, guess, I guess funding. I'm funding mm -hmm. it myself. Um. So that's the major. Um, challenge and the second thing is a is is the first category in the in the industry so we have um, a building association that looks after the builders or the members of contractor suppliers yeah. there's no one really looking after customers there's no. real estate agents which looking after closing the sale for the builders but no one actually helping the customers no. and it's a new concept mm -hmm. that um that I'm trying to break through yeah. And I think that's my biggest challenge because okay. they've never heard anything like this before. They've never had anyone to compare with. It, mm. um, hopefully people will start seeing the value of it and break that niche. Yeah, well, how, how do also people find you? Because builders, it's easy to search for builders, it's easy to search for real estate agents, but you know, they don't know that your service is out there and, and they don't necessarily have places where they can go to search for similar services. So how do people, how, how are you getting out there? Um, I advertise through, I've got a website, I've got a Facebook page, I do um, different platforms like um, magazines to Canberra mm -hmm. Weekly. Um, I will be part of the HIA Association soon. Great. Um, so I will be part of their website or, or their members sections. Um, I'm going to be in a Gangalan Festival this oh, weekend so, yes. um, so I can keep in touch with the community. Um, so I'm trying different um, platform and yes. see which which is the most um, effective one. And I guess that's more one of the challenges. Yeah, what, that's what, what I is thought. what is the most effective advertising platform out there to to get the word out? Mm. And and you know word of mouth is the most ex um, more, most effective platform, but getting there is the the hard one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So so what have you learned so far in the process of setting up the business? Um. It's a lot of a lot harder than you think. You know, you start off with um, optimism, and you you hit a lot of obstacles, and you get disheartened very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my biggest lesson is, I didn't do much that like work work in the first half of my business, and hoping for a miracle that people would just accept my service as as soon as they hear it. Yes. Um, I think you just need to do a lot of more leg work on this. I mm -hmm. do a lot of um, networking with different businesses, um, networking with people, and now I'm going through the Gangalan Festival. So I'm doing a lot more leg work, and that is the biggest lesson for me. It miracles doesn't happen. Yeah, yes. And you see this internet sensation where they just you know sit at home and they open up a website and they become a millionaire overnight. Those things doesn't happen. No, no, no. Yeah. I, often there's eight or nine years of effort behind yeah. those people that you just don't see. It's under the covers. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, I think that's my biggest, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting because it's exactly the same with a shop as well. Yeah. If you go and open a shop somewhere in a shopping centre, mm. customers don't just appear out of nowhere. You yeah. also still have to do the hard yards. You have mm. to get known. You have to build a network. You have to get people to the location. Yeah. Online, it's... It can be quicker and you can get your message out there further and mm -hmm. faster than before, mm -hmm. but you're still with the, have the same problem in that you can open the website and yep. nobody comes. 
Yes, and with the websites these days, the, anyone can open a web website. So you, um, you're fighting for position in the Google result now yes. than ever before. So um, getting that um, search engine optimization is quite hard and expensive. Unlike, say, we're talking about 10 years ago, when you open a website, you Google it, you'll be on the first rank. Yes. These days, you're fighting with thousands of businesses out there. Um, yeah, that's, uh, th that's one of the challenges. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I guess, you know, I, I guess you're quite new at this business. Mm -hmm. um, so, what would you tell somebody who is starting out now, based on your experience? I think um, um, I'm an accountant by trade, so mm -hmm. I've been, um, you know, I do project management as well. So, I've got a lot of business background in working for the business rather than me doing the business. Um, if you are going to start up a business, Learn as much as you can about running a business, you know, whether, yep. um, you know, the financial or financial part of it, the taxation, um, marketing, legal, etc. Go to a business workshop, um, research about your target, target um, audience um, and your market and getting yourself as educated as you can before you start off a business rather than um, doing it as I go. Yes. There's, there, there are a lot of risk. Um, it's, there are things that you can do as you go, but preparing yourself mentally for it, it's the the best way to to enter a business. So yeah. at least there's no surprises on, say, legal fee or something or litigation yes. or anything yes. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, and. I, I think you know some of the things there. Obviously, there's all the, the business management side, which is sort of the finance, the legal side. There's also the marketing yeah. side as well. You yeah. talked about both of those. Yeah. Um, and the, and they are really different skill sets, and can be difficult to cross over between yes. them. Yeah. How, how have you found that? Because you know, also running your own business, mm -hmm. you you have to do everything. Yes. And you can only afford a certain level of help. Mm. So how is it, you know, you come from the accounting background, mm. you've got that side down pat, mm. now you're dealing with the marketing side and yeah. you have to deal with, you know, actually the customers and the yeah. customer service and, and those things as well. Mm. How do you actually manage to spread yourself around the business? Okay, um, I'm, I guess I'm quite fortunate in the fact that my, um, my previous experience has a lot of um, networking um, aspect to it so I don't just sit on the desk and do my work so I do um, I do a lot of um, talking to say um, the lowest level person to a senior executives so I have that experience on dealing with people socially yes and um, with um, with uni and CPA we did learn how to do marketing as well mm -hmm. so um, and what are the different platform um, it the only thing that is hard is putting the theory to practice. Yes. So you need to do, do, to practice. Um, but you do learn as, as you go. You've got the theory base and um, getting that the right platform for your business and one there's not one size fit all. You know, I, I've seen businesses that Facebook page is enough. They get yes. lots of customers. I've, I've, I've heard of this lady that she's become a millionaire within six months on a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and other people have to to do a lot of hard yards just like me. I do a lot of leg, leg work on doing networking, etc. So um, it is it is hard to transform from being an accountant to a marketing. But I think my my background helped me a lot because I do a lot of that anyway in my working yeah. for someone. Yeah, and so yeah. and it's also everything else in the business too. Yeah. You have to be as well. Yeah, because it is just you at this point. Yes, it is just yeah. me. Yeah, like. I, I created my own website. No, that's fantastic. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it is it is um it, it's quite exciting. You learn a lot of new things. But um as um a only person, I think um asking someone to help you as well, if mm -hmm. that may be. I know there's a lot of costs on asking someone to do it, but you'd rather get it right the first time than yeah than um fix the the missing. Um, you don't want to miss an opportunity because yeah. you try to to save as much money as you can. Yeah, you, you do something that, that you're no good at it and yeah. you end up with a result that is, you know, what you put in really. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, so so um, you also did an awful lot of research. You yes. said you spent 12 months yes. looking at the market and those sort of things as yes. well. Um, and, uh, and you know, having project management and, and accounts in your background, mm. I, I, I'm going to assume that you have a fairly planning disposition. Mm. So you do do a lot of planning and thinking about yep. it and structuring to make sure things work. Yes. So um, would you really recommend to people that they do put in that time to really understand the market and you know, come and, and basically be able to put together the business before they actually invest in putting together the business? Yes, definitely. Like all the planning actually becomes more fruitful, especially, um, you know, the, I've read an article the other day is what is your service or what is your good? Is it an aspirin or is it a vitamin? A yes. vitamin is a must-have, an aspirin is, uh, sorry, uh, an aspirin is a must-have and um, a vitamin is, is good to have. Yes. Um, so you need to separate yourself in there. and if It's a need or a want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and position yourself on whether mm. you're a need or want. Um, and planning around that, getting, does your service has an actual um, audience for it or a market for it? And the actual planning, have your business plan ready? And the, your business plan is not... It's not stagnant. You have to review it every yes. like three months. It's not something that you do it once and then put it in the drawer and don't look at it again. Um, and you need to revise as much as possible. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. You have to do the research, the planning. What are the risks of your business and how you can mitigate it? And what yeah. are your preventative measures? Or um, get a proper advice. Yes, for, find, for find somebody who can tell you and help you through that journey. Yes. And, th and there's a lot available these days. Like there, mm. There's Sebrin down here and, and the network of services that's mm. provided you mm. know, related to Sebrin. Yes. And there's similar networks um, yeah. you know, across the country, yeah. um, particularly often attached to sort of the, the, the incubators and the co-working spaces and things like that, yeah. but also more broadly. Yeah, there's um, something called ACT Business Chambers, so it's um, yes. kind of subsidised by the government. You still have to pay a small fee, but most of the fees is paid by the government. Um, there's a lot of business workshops in there that I've, that I've attended one, and I think it's really good, so I, mm. I definitely um, recommend that to people that are starting up so to understand the whole business management of everything, from marketing, financial, legal. Um, etc. So, well, if you're going yeah. to invest in a business, you may as well invest in your own skills yes, first because yes. you're going to be the business for a while while it's growing. Yes, yeah. and um, I think that there are people um, get tripped because they miss one factor of the business. Yeah, well, to just drawing on that get tripped uh, mm. idea, what um, would you have done differently that mm -hmm. you know now that you didn't know maybe a year ago? Um, Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, um, as I said, um, don't. I should have done the legwork from the first start, rather mm -hmm. than being so optimistic that the that the world will just accept my so, service. So more so marketing, sort yeah. of, yeah, yeah, more more getting out there and networking and telling people, hey, this is what I'm going to be coming out with. Yes, that sort of thing. yeah, I think marketing is the hardest one to for me mm -hmm. to um, to grasp. And until now, I'm still learning every day on how I can get the best platform for my service. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and trying to put the systems in place behind it that didn't give yeah. you a sort of guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, but, you know, consistent outcomes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the systems in place for my service as yep. it is. Like, I've got a business systems. Um, my only problem is, I guess, my challenge is just get that service out there. Yeah. Once I get the client, I've got a um, pretty good system, I think, anyway, on, on actually how delivering, to the service. delivering the service. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's a lead generation that it gets a, it gets yeah. a lot of businesses, yes. I think, because yeah. they, they, they know their subject matter, they know, what they know their delivery bit, mm. but they don't necessarily know how to get the customers yeah. to their service. Yeah. That's yeah. always um, yeah. you know, a big challenge, I think, mm. for a lot of businesses. Yeah, yeah. And I, I said, um, this is a new category in, the, in mm. the industry, and how can people trust that new category? Well, it's, it's, it's a disruptive service, but yeah. at the same point, it's one that offers you know, a lot of benefit to mm. people because there is so much, uh, I suppose, friction. You know, mm. the, the people lose money because you, know, you only build a house or buy a house off the plan mm. you know, once every 
you know, 10 years yeah. at most. Yeah. So people don't build up the skills. And, yes. and that's partially why real estate agents develop because mm. they're skilled in buying and selling in houses mm. so that individuals who rarely buy and sell houses yeah. didn't have to be skilled at getting the maximum exactly. you know, price for a sale or a buy. That's yeah. why buyer's agents have come about as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, um, but you know, this, this is sort of, it's a service that sits alongside those. It's, it's sort of, there's lots of money that's falling into a pit, which the builders are picking up and, yeah. and you're keeping it out. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, so it's, I just hope that people s understand the service that I'm going, and I do give money back guarantee. So if you don't think that I helped you at all, right. uh, if I if you think that um, you know I didn't save you any money at all or didn't reduce your stress at all, I'll give you your money back because I'm trying to be I'm trying to ch drive change in the industry rather than that's my my driving force. Mm -hmm. So I. I say I don't want the cost to stop people from coming to my business. No, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, good luck with your business. Yeah, I, th I think you. it's a fantastic service and much needed. Yeah. And, um, yeah, hopefully good things are in the future for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, cool. thank you. Thanks.